Hi guys, welcome to my Samsung Galaxy Note 9 review. Now, you've probably already noticed that it says part one. Um, I think this is the first time I've split a review into more than one video. Um, basically just because <laughs> just how big it looks. Um, and when I say how big, so as I'm using the device, I've got a Google document that I just, I've got my different headings, be it uh, design, hardware, screen, camera, you know, whatever. And as I notice things, I drop them in. Um, and normally it's no bigger than two pages. Usually it's like a page and a half, not a problem. Review videos, maybe 15, 16 minutes, job done. Um, I'm up to five pages. <laughs> there's just there's just so much to it. Um, so let's make that very clear right now. This is gonna be a reasonably lengthy process that we're doing, watching this video and me reviewing it. But that's what made me think, I, bet I, I prefer to split it into Individ not individual videos, but sub videos, just to make it more palatable, I suppose. Um, so point one, love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments. Please do let me know. I look back at my Note 4. The Note 4 review is one that stands out in my mind as one that took me a long time to do. It was quite detailed. Um, it, and I, and I, I've looked back, it was 34 minutes, 55 seconds. Even the notes for that were only two pages. <laughs> <laughs> I got five pages and granted one of the pages is kind of just doing an introduction this video or this part of the video um, My unboxing though of the note 9 was 27 minutes I don't I don't intend to do videos that long. I mean, I think you guys like them like you can go out and watch a seven or eight minute long review quite easy There's loads of them out there. I think they miss a lot of stuff They'll give you a general feeling for it. But if you actually want to know some detail I think that's what I'm here for again. Let me know your thoughts so I don't waffle for too much because I don't want to make it any longer than it needs to be. Um, but I'm going to tell you now that this part, my intention at the moment is to have two parts. Part one, this one, introduction, uh, which is a bit of about my note history. If you've seen the unboxing, you might want to skip through that. And I'm also intending at this point to put in the video description time marks for the different things. So if you do want to skip through me waffling right now, have a look in the video description. You should see where you can click to move straight onto the design, me talking about the design. So part one. Intro, design, hardware, screen, camera, battery, and connectivity. So all the kind of hardware-related things, really, in this in this video. Um, part two would be all about the software, the S Pen, Dex, Bixby, hackability, and then, of course, the conclusion. So that'll be in the second video. Anyway, um, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to all those that do watch me waffle on. Um, I get lots of comments, lots of feedback, They're almost always positive, so I really appreciate that. I really appreciate this. Obviously, there's, a, there's a bunch of you that are watching all of my videos, kind of regardless almost. And I, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'll come and say hello on my forum, so come to androidandroid.uk. I feel a little bit lonely there, and I, I, don't, I don't feel motivated to post or talk much about tech and things like that, so if there's a few other people over there, it might be nice. Um, so, my note history. I did have the Note 1. It's funny, someone commented on one of the videos recently saying, uh, you know, such great memories of the Note 1. I, or, or, or the Note, as it was known then. <laughs> um, I don't think I did have. I think I thought it was too big. I think I thought it was big and bulky and, and a bit ugly and all that kind of thing. I do have a terrible memory, so I could be wrong, but I do seem to remember thinking it's too big. I can't operate it with one hand and all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm not sure that I actually even bought the Note 2. I can't remember. The Note 3 definitely I did. The Note 3 was my daily device. Um, really liked it, really liked it. The Note 4 was an interesting one because a lot of people think it's kind of the best Note. Um, obviously you need to, th not now, it's not better than a 9 is now or even an 8 or whatever, but for what it was at the time, compared to everyone else, that the 4 was probably the best Note that there's been. Um, and I kind of agreed. I did a comparison video where I compared it to the Nexus 6. And it won pretty much everything, I think, apart from software, where I said, well, the 6 is stock Android, but, you know. Um, and then proceeded to use the Nexus 6 as my daily. I think because whatever version of Android had just come out with the Nexus 6, I can't remember, Lollipop? I don't know, I can't remember. Um, it allowed you to um, encrypt the device, which meant that I could put my work stuff on it. So it was just a lot easier for me to have work on my phone. Um, and with the Note 4, I couldn't do that. Then I had the Note 5 up against the Nexus 6P. And for me, the Note 5 probably has my fondest memories of Note devices. I, I love that device. Um, I bought it 
when we landed on a holiday in Canada, that was quite. A, that was my, my first mission was, yeah, all right, we're in Canada. Brilliant. Now I need to go and find a phone shop and buy a Note 5, uh, which I did, and then had my brother film me doing the unboxing in the hotel room. So that was quite fun, some fun memories. And again, I did a comparison of 5 versus the Nexus 6P. Um, and the 5 won. I think that was a bit closer, to be fair, than the than the 4 versus the Nexus 6. But the Note 5 won. Uh, that actually got stolen as a, from a burglary. I just bought another one. Really liked the device. Um, then, then we came onto the Note 7. Now, Time Hop has reminded me of this. I love Time Hop because, I, as I said, I have a terrible memory. I can't remember. I knew I wanted Note 7 at the time, but I can't really remember what happened. And what it was, I'd ordered with them through the website, their website, Coffee and Warehouse, did I mention that? Um, and they'd said, yeah, you'll get it release day. Brilliant, place the order. Then I got an email saying, actually, you're going to get it like two weeks later. Ah, oh, screw this. So I cancelled it. Because I think two weeks later, I was going to be on holiday in America again. And I thought, I'll just buy one when I'm in the States. Whatever. Um, then this started bursting into flames. Oh. And annoyingly, so I'd already cancelled my car phone warehouse order because I wouldn't be there when they wanted to deliver. And they then dished out £50 vouchers to everyone that had ordered one that could no longer have one. So I missed out on that. Thanks, brilliant. Um, so obviously the Note 7 wasn't done. So I bought the Pixel. Well, Pixel XL, to be precise. And I loved it. Um, really, really good phone. So when the Pixel 2 XL came along, I didn't honestly really even think much about the Note 8. I just kind of... The, the 2 XL had some really good upgrades from the XL, which I loved. Why would I leave it? I was I was just pleased, I suppose, that Google doing a, a top-end quality device. I know there's lots of arguments that people out there probably get some comments about what was wrong with it. It's not per it wasn't perfect, nowhere near perfect, but you could tell it was more premium than the Nexus devices that I'd also loved previously. Um, so I stuck with that. I don't know what it was when I've seen the leaks of the Pixel 3 XL. Maybe, maybe it's to do with the notch. No, I defend the notch or notches, and even the Pixel 3 XL notch. People say it's massive, and it is quite big, but. You know, they also say, oh, the chin's massive on the 3XL. It really isn't. It's this fairly normal-sized chin. Um, it's not that different to the Note 9's chin. It just looks worse because you've then got the black navigation bar with just a pill in it. So it does that makes it look really big? And that's a whole other discussion why they shouldn't shrink. They're using gestures now. Why do you need a whole bar just for a pill? Anyway, let's, let's not get started on that. Um, and it just made me, it kind of then made me think back to, hang on a second, I'm a Note kind of guy, really, essentially. I've, I've been a big Note fan, so... Let's have a look at the Note 9. Now, very expensive at £100, but I found um, it's technically, is it second hand technically? The guy sent it to me before he even opened it. Um, then sold the Fortnite skin for like £87. So actually, it's only cost me, it was cost me less than £700, which is, I think is pretty good. Uh, this, uh, I have the 128 gig version. There is a 512 gig version. Now, 128 gig version, sort of historically has been a bigger option on most devices. I did do it for the Pixel XL only because the other option was 32 gig, which is too small. I would have been worried about that, but 64 is the sweet spot for me and that's what my 2XL was. So 128 gig being the smaller version seems kind of weird to me. Um, 512, why would I need that much? But the weird thing, whenever I was, oh, I'm gonna have an SD card slot. I went out and ordered a 128 gig SD card. <laughs> I've got 256 gig. I was happy with 64 before. Why have I spent more money to increase to 256 gig? Just because I could, I suppose. A little bit silly, a little bit weird. Anyway, so that's all my waffle. Let's move on to, uh, <laughs> to the actual review, I guess. So let's start with the design. Now, I guess I should point out straight away, it might be quite apparent, but I've got a tempered glass screen protector on this already. So it does obviously change the look a little bit. Possibly even more so is my D-brand black camo skin on the back. So um, I guess look back at my unboxing video if you want to see how it looks kind of before I before I tampered with it. But uh, we can still talk about the design, I think, though. So it's got a 0.1 inch bigger screen than last year's Note 8. Um, not particularly noticeable, I wouldn't say. I didn't have the Note 8, but I'm just guessing that 0.1 of an inch isn't really going to be very noticeable. It does have, I think, very small bezels, though, top and bottom. Not so noticeable because I've got a black screen, but I would say they're pretty small. And I do think that I prefer the sort of um, the just thin bezels rather than to the edge but with a notch. But that is general. I'm not massively against the notch. I would have a notch if the Note 9 had a notch, I probably still would have bought it, so it's not a deal breaker, but I just generally would prefer the sort of, just small bezels is fine for me. Um, 
The other notable thing changing from Note 8, the Note 8, sorry, which a lot of people commented on and complained about is the placement of the fingerprint sensor. So it's now just below the camera module there. Last year, I believe it was just up next to it. And I can't imagine that would be quite a weird place to be reaching to. I mean, that's still quite high, I would say, compared to some. I would, I would imagine my pixel's somewhere around here. So it's still a bit of a reach. One thing I would comment on the skin, actually, it makes it a lot easier to find. So does not, it's quite low profile and discreet, the fingerprint sensor. And I did sometimes, I was, am, I on, am I on it, am I missing? And actually with this skin, you can tell where the skin is because it's textured. It is quite easy to find the fingerprint sensor. Generally, it is uh, it is very fast and I would say very reliable. I had no issues, uh, so certainly very good. It's, I also quite like that Samsung, instead of you having to do, with most phones, you have to kind of put it on, move it around. I mean, it's only, what we're we talking, 30 seconds. It's not a massive big issue, but um, with Samsung, you literally just sort of scroll your finger over it and it learns your finger from that. That's quite clever, it's quite cool. Um, it's 201 grams, so it's actually heavier than the Xperia XZ2, which I kind of didn't like because it was so big and bulky. So, so this is how it's only two grams, but it is heavier, which kind of makes me think, oh, um, I'm, I'm not going to get on with this. But maybe it's just the 8.8 .8 millimeters instead of the like the 11 plus millimeters of the XZ2. That it just doesn't feel quite. I mean, it does feel it feels sturdy, should we say? It does feel a bit of a weight. But it doesn't feel like big and bulky, I suppose, basically. Um, what it does do, when I get my Pixel 2 XL back out, it, it really makes the Pixel 2 XL feel sort of quite small, thin, and, and light, <laughs> which I don't think I'd have thought before. So it's an aluminium frame, um, and it does have a glass front and a glass back, which is kind of why I've put the D-brand skin protector on. I just don't want to risk. It, it didn't, wasn't that it felt particularly slippy like some phones do? I don't want to risk, because I, I do often just leave my phone on its back on a table, and as I think I scratched the Sony, sorry, Sony, um, they can't they can scratch. It, it, does, it does happen. So just that's why I've gone with it. I don't like cases that are a bit, they are a bit too big and bulky for me, so I've just gone with the skin. Um, check out the video on the D-Brand skin if, uh, if it's something that might interest you. So onto the actual hardware and the specs and everything. Um, the Note 9 is pretty much a powerhouse really, I suppose. Interestingly, so um, in Europe and, and maybe Asia, I'm not sure, we get an Exynos 9810 chipset, whereas the Americans, and I'm not sure where else, get a Snapdragon 845. There is quite a bit of talk how the Exynos isn't, just isn't as good as the Snapdragon. Um, you can see lag here and there, blah, blah, blah. I honestly haven't noticed it. I don't know how they would benchmark one against the other if the Snapdragon actually does. Some, I, mean, I think, again, I think I've read that it does beat the Exynos in um, Antutu. But I've, I'm finding it very slick and smooth in everything that I do. There's really no issues. You know, it's, I personally think it's very, very fast. Um, anyway, let's move on past the chipset. The uh, the actual CPU is an octa-core, four times 2.7 gigahertz Mongoose M3, and four times 1.8 gigahertz Cortex-A55. My understanding, and I could be wrong, that they have two different sort of, so the four at 2.7 and the four at 1.8, and when it's not really needed, it just uses the, the slower processor, which uses less power. And when it needs the power, it, it uses the, uh, the the faster one, or maybe even both. I'm not entirely sure, but that's kind of the reason there's two at different speeds. The GPU is a Mali G72 MP18. I, again, I couldn't really tell you much about that, I'm afraid. Um, I'm used to the sort of Adrenos and things, but you've got to assume it's a very much the equivalent. Um, on Geekbench 4, I'm finally moving over to Geekbench 4, mainly because actually because this phone, so Geekbench 3, the Note 9, didn't it didn't bench what very well at all. Uh, and then I did it on Geekbench 4 and it smashed it. It smashed Geekbench 4. Uh, it beat the XZ2 and, you know, just an amazing big score of like 8,950 as an average. Um, the best I've ever tested. I mean, I've only tested a few on, on Geekbench 4, but uh, this, and this is only the second one of this kind of generation, should we say. Um... It does have stereo speakers, so let's give a quick blast of, first of all, the podcast. Uh, 
his pole position performances, things like that. And all of a sudden, every weekend, especially, I think it was Baku, Q3 Baku, it just all went wrong for him. And it's happened a few times where just the last little... A little bit of music. So stereo speakers, uh, one out of the bottom there and another one, I think slightly quieter, coming out of the top. Really very good, really very good. Um, again, interestingly though, so I hadn't twigged at first. You've got a Dolby Atmos setting. Have I still got it there? No, it's, it's one of those I've hidden. I didn't have that turned on. And the speaker only scored um, 83.9 decibels as an average on my test. I turned Dolby Atmos on and it still only scored 86.7. Um, which isn't a massive score. There's a lot of lots of phones that score higher, but strangely, this just it just sounds really loud. I don't think my test works so great for stereo speakers because the, the microphone's quite close. I should probably have set the microphone like a meter away, and that lets the opportunity just for a general. Because generally, your phone is going to be a bit further away, isn't it? But the problem being, I've got like I don't know how many phones now doing that test, and I don't want to change the test because it will skew all of the other results. You know, all, all the previous results becoming valid. But I guess, again, I don't know how well it comes through on the speaker here, on the microphone here, sorry. But trust me, it sounds really good. Speakers are important to me. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I like to make phone calls just using the speakers, to be honest. Um, and they really are important. And I think these are very, very good. I don't know, the Pixel 3 XL, if it's going to compete, for me, has got all its work cut out with those speakers. Uh, there is sort of an iris scanner at the top there as well. So we're going to try, here, we'll use it up on this one. So I'm going to press the power button, but nothing else and looking at it and it's unlocked pretty quick. Um, it does iris and face detection in one go. I don't know how secure it is, if I'm honest, but I don't think, you know, no one else can just walk up and use it, put it that way. But I mean, I don't think photos are gonna cut it because I think the iris scanner is, is a bit better than that. Um, and it is quite useful. So when there are times that I've got my phone on the desk, I can't really do it with the camera in the way, but we'll see if it can, if it can see me. I think, yeah. The camera, the camera's in right where I would want my head to be. But rather than having to get around to the fingerprint sensor, it's quite handy, you can just turn it on, put your head over the top of the phone, and it unlocks. Uh, obviously, it has NFC, so you can use things like Android Pay and Samsung Pay, which I think I'm gonna come to later, or in the software bit, probably. Um, it's also IP68 dust and waterproof, so that's up to one and a half meters for 30 minutes. Now, it's not the kind of thing, I have I have in the past done videos where I'll test that, I'll get into the shower with them or whatever, or at least I'll hang the phone out in the shower. I just, I'm sure it'd be fine, I just don't want to risk it with a 90 pound phone, I've not really got much to gain. If I was getting millions of views, and that's not to put down you guys that are watching me, but if I was getting millions of views, I would do that kind of thing, but <laughs> it's just, it's quite a big risk, isn't it really? Um, it does have a three and a half mil jack, wowzers. Not that I've used it for, I don't know, how long since I last used a three and a half jack. It actually more interests me for the fact that I can plug a microphone in. So if I'm filming things, I could I could plug a microphone in and have whoever I'm talking to, if it's me, have one of the little sort of lavier, whatever, the lapel sort of microphones. Um, that's probably a bigger interest to me. Uh, so I'm including this bit in hardware talking about Samsung Pay because it lets me have my loyalty cards. I don't really know if I should show much on Samsung Pay because but that's my discount card for work. I've got my loyalty card there as well. Um, and it will actually it will actually work. So the tills at work, they're quite old. They use the old infrared scanning um, to read barcodes. And generally, I think, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because the phone's screens are too reflective, but it generally won't scan a phone screen. So we do have people coming, oh, but I've got it on my phone, and nothing happens. But on Samsung devices, I don't know if it's all of them or just the more top-end ones, they used to use something called MoBeam, and I'm told they don't use that anymore, but effectively what MoBeam does, maybe they just built it into Samsung Pay or just built it into the hardware full stop. I think when it knew that it was something was trying to read its barcode, it basically emitted a signal back down to the barcode reader and basically just said, right, yeah, is the barcode. Amazing. So it does work. That works again on my phone. I remember it working on my Note 5, and that was the, one of the big things I really missed on my Pixel was that I couldn't do that, and I had to make sure I had my wallet with me. I don't have to again now. So that's quite handy. Um, it does have a pressure sensitive home button. To be honest, I've turned it off and I'm not entirely sure if I would find it in the settings. Let's have a really quick look and if I can't, I'll just home, hard press home button. Let's turn it on for a second. 
pressure test. Oops, I'm off, I'm off camera, sorry. So, fine. Exit test. Come back out. And it brings up Google Now. But what I found is I was, I was kind of bringing it out of my pocket and I kept triggering it much more than the Pixel 2 XL's size side squeezing version. But that, that might suit you, there might be something that you want that you like. Move on to the screen. I'm going to try and pick the pace up because this is taking very long already. <laughs> so the screen is a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED. It's 2960 by 1440. That's ridiculous. That's massive. That's loads of pixels. That's 516 pixels per inch. Now, interestingly, I've got it set to 1080p though. By default, it comes at 1080p mode. Um, you can, you, there's various different ways that you can have, you can just go into display and say, no, I want the full 2K experience, but it's going to burn more battery. And I personally, I don't think you're going to, you know, 1080p on a device this small, surely that's, that's plenty, surely. Um, I guess let's open up a YouTube video to really see a bit better. Should we look at one of my own? Let's look at one of my own, why not? An interesting video about how interesting video on how to remove bloat from your Samsung. So to me the screen it is fantastic. And actually maybe maybe my videos aren't the best example because you, you maybe want some brighter, more vibrant colours than that. But so let's let's have a quick look and see if there's I don't know who this dude is. Oh, is it a bird? It is. Yeah, she's perhaps not, perhaps not the best example either. But it does, the screen is fantastic. Now, interestingly, it only scored, well it couldn't even get to 600 lumens when I use the light meter. When I turn, I use a white screen, I turn adaptive brightness off and I crank it right the way to the top. And it, it got like 597 or something like that. It really surprised me because it seems such a bright and vibrant screen. I, I was honestly surprised it didn't score higher. But I guess that was kind of back. So it's not a it's not a concern. It really isn't a concern. Yes, Samsung's normally score up over 800. I don't know why this one doesn't, but it definitely is not a concern. Most people that came from a Note 8 said, yeah, the Note 9's a better screen. So I wouldn't worry in that respect. It has got Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on either side. I still don't trust it, hence I've got the tempered uh, tempered glass. Well, I say I don't trust it. I might take the, the glass screen off. Um, it does have, as you can see, an always on screen. I don't quite like, the, the notifications aren't as useful though, because that's all you get. You don't really get kind of any information. It just says YouTube's got a notification for you. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, but I do, I mean, I love, I almost can't be without an always on screen now. It's just, I'm, I guess just because I'm so used to it, really. So it's already taken a lot longer than I thought it would. I waffled too much in that introduction. So we're actually going to split um, camera and battery uh, and connectivity into part two. And then all the software is going to move on after that.